going on? There you go. Well, hey. Happy Monday. <laughs> How come you don't look happy? <laughs> it's Monday. It's Monday. Monday. It's a great Monday's day. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. That's right. It is. <laughs> we got our hats on, man. We're ready to go. You, I, 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 uh, so cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I don't, it's cold out. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's Monday, and so we need to get this week started, right? We do. We do. We yeah. Do. So let me tell you how my day started this morning. All right, let's hear it. My wife got up early, 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 and I, well, obviously she fixed it the night before, but fixed a uh, French toast casserole with oh, pizza. Yes. Dude. Yeah. Dudettes yeah. out there. <laughs> it was woo. I'm yeah. gonna have some more of it after we're done here. That is a that is a Christmas morning tradition for us. Is a is a French toast casserole. Oh my goodness. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 I'll be over. So this is done. <laughs> <I'll join you. laughs> It'll be a pastor's meeting. It'll be good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and my cup of coffee and. Boy, we're, I mean, I'm set. This is the way to start out a Monday morning, eh? Yeah, that is a good, that is a good Monday. So, yeah. um, I, so I want to say uh, yesterday, so we're looking at maybe doing some things to our house. So we had this guy come over to give us a quote on windows. And after everything was done, he said, here, I'll get, I'll get a quote right now. So he went out to his vehicle and we kind of ate our supper and waited for him. He came back in and he's, all right, so here's what I got. And he's laying it all out for us. Okay, sweet. And he, he starts saying, so how, what kind of financing could we do? I'm like, dude, like, I don't make a decision in a day. <laughs> He's like, dollars? you want me to sign on the line today? Like, no, you're giving me a quote and you're leaving. And I'll decide over the next couple of weeks. And I just watching his, watching his energy just drain. For some reason, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I enjoyed telling you. Like, I don't know how many people you swindled into doing this, but wow, that would have been a lot of money just to go into debt like that. And like, how many people actually fall for this? Like, no, I, I wanted a quote. That's all I wanted. All right. yeah. yeah. You uh, you didn't use the line, we're not talking about Jesus here. I could make a decision about him very quickly. It's, it's <laughs> the window. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's get after it. Chris is going to read today. Yeah. Yeah. We're in First Thessalonians three. Yep. And uh, we're doing chapters at a time right now. We're just we're in high gear. Yes. Zoom. This is awesome. We're just we're able to handle this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is. Uh, I'm going to be reading from the New King James version. Uh, sometimes it gets a little funny with the wording, so I'll try not to stumble too bad, but. All right, here we go. Woe me when you need to woe me. Uh, chapter three. Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith, that no one should be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we were a that we are appointed to this. For in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation, just as it happened, and you know. For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to you, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might be in vain. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think, I think through, it's. Uh, was that through verse five? I'm sorry. Yeah. Verse five. Okay. That was verse three, verse five. Okay. Go ahead, Nate. <clears throat> yeah. So I think um, once again, uh, we see the heart of, of Paul in, in regardless of the scenario, regardless of the circumstances, he wants to make sure that, that the church is encouraged um, regardless of what he's experiencing. He wants to make sure that, that they're able to continue on doing what they're doing. And he feels it necessary and important that he would be one that would encourage them. 
And I, I love the fact that <clears throat> no matter what, no matter how he's able to um, participate or contribute to all of this, the one thing that he's, he can guarantee is that he can contribute his encouragement and, and um, guidance and pushing forward. I mean, the whole point behind it is so that they would um, they would hold on to it. They would hold on to their faith that they would continue walking that out, even as the days get more difficult and, and harder. And uh, yeah, I just uh, I really appreciate the fact that that was uh, it didn't matter. That he was going to make sure that he was encouraging them. Yeah, I love a couple things about this opening. These opening five verses, and and uh, Paul could have said, "Well, I can't come." Good luck. You know, I, that's that that's his encouragement. I mean, a lot of times that's what we do. If we can't do it, um, we don't think about sending someone else or I'll be there in a week or I'll be there when I can get there. And then we just kind of drop the ball. But no, he went the extra mile. He grabbed a hold of Timothy and said, go, 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 go to encourage them. And just what you had said, Nate, about encouragement. Um, it talks about uh, it. it uh, in verse four about the troubles that would soon come. It's not if they'll come, it's when they'll come. And I'm thinking of, uh, uh, as a Christian, Christian or not Christian, troubles are going to come. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you went to the school of hard knocks or the life of hard knocks, but troubles are going to come. And um, uh, a question that I've always asked is, how do you do it without Jesus? How do you do that? Um, and I've asked that, you know, to myself about people. And I mean, it's it, it, it's hard enough going through life um, just as as a Christian. It's a it's hard. It's hard being a Christian. And because of the troubles that come and the extra stuff that is piled on us. But um, but we've got Jesus and I am encouraged by Paul's words here and Timothy going to encourage these awesome stuff. Oh, I just wanted to add one thing to that. Um, <laughs> I feel like I failed there for a second because right there at the beginning of three, it says, therefore, and, and I was always told when you see therefore, you have to figure out what it's there for. Yeah. So right. <laughs> the end of First Thessalonians 2, like that end of that chapter, talked about how they couldn't make it. They tried to come. We wanted to come visit you, you church. But Satan stopped us. And so then that's therefore when we could no longer endure it. And he actually says that twice. So this is where it sticks out to me. Is he says it twice here in this section where he says, verse one, when we could no longer endure it. And then it's like verse four, I think he says it. Oh, no, verse five. He says, when I could no longer endure it. And to me, that that kind of as a pastor, that kind of stirs me a little bit. Like I feel like so what I'm saying is we live in a society of me and it's I and all about me and even the people try to preach a gospel, a, a self-centered gospel where it's all about you. Like, let me, let me tell you how Jesus loves you. And it's all about you. And, and Jesus wants you to have a good life. And, and I love this, this, I feel like changes that mentality a little bit. Like Paul wasn't worried about the gospel for himself. Paul was so concerned for these people. He couldn't endure the thought of not knowing how they were doing. Like he wanted to come to them so badly because well, for one, you think about it, he tribulation is going to come. Um, he knew he got kicked out of the town because he's preaching Jesus. So he knew that church was going to deal with some of that, too. And he did again. And they didn't have cell phones. So he's like, I have no clue how you guys are doing. And it's I can't endure it anymore. So I'm sending Timothy. Like, do we have people that we're discipling? And we're like, oh, I just I haven't heard from them in a while. How are they doing? Are they still following Jesus? Are they still OK or? What tribulation are they dealing with right now? Like, do we have that in our hearts for other people? And that, that's what it made my heart skip a beat. Like, man, like that's beautiful. That's a, a beautiful picture to me. It's like Paul really cared for them that much. Yeah. Well, it, it shows you just the um, the importance of there's two importances that you can. That there's two things in here that I find are very important is the fact that you have somebody that you're bringing along, not only that you're discipling, that you're curious about, but that you're maybe even discipling uh, and they're with you. They're around you. You're, you're in constant communication with them. They're the ones that are prepared to step in if you're, if you're not there, you know, and, and it obviously it looks much different for Paul than probably what it does for an everyday ordinary person. But it doesn't, though. I mean, we're still called to make disciples. We're still called to pour into people's um, 
life and uh and so that the, regardless of what happens to us the mission continues forward right and so that's um i think that's one of the you know, that's one of the things that you've always seen um with with byron in the in the church is that it's always been it's not about the, the one individual that will continue on regardless of of who's in place or if anyone's in place, but we're going to, the mission is going to continue forward. And even more so as the days continue on, we have to be prepared. The, the mission can continue to go on regardless, regardless of what comes our way. And so, um, and with that too, we just, once the point that you were bringing up, Chris, about the idea of um, having your heart um, s- stirred because how are some, how is somebody doing? I haven't heard from them a while in a while. And Paul's Paul, Paul's letter that goes out and the fact that he sent Timothy out um, is such a, a great indicator of um, how we can become complacent with our technology and <laughs> like a simple, hey, I'm going to continue to reach out. I, that, that idea, we can, we can easily, um, if we get stirred about how, how is somebody doing, we can easily reach out and find out how they're doing. But are we doing that? And, uh, man, that's it's convicting. Yeah. I, um, uh, I'm looking at, uh, uh, at verse five and, and, um, even Paul as strong in the faith that he is, why is he sending Timothy there? And my scripture says, um, I was afraid that the tempter had gotten the best of you. So he, there was some fear there. And uh, that, and he goes on to say, and that all our work had been useless. You know, he thought it was just down the drain. Mm-hmm. As we're going to find out, what, what, it, what were they? Where were they? I'm not going to spoil that. Um, <laughs> so, what were they? Did they, did they fall off the edge of the cliff? Were they as strong as ever? I mean, he, he was worried about that. He had a fear in him. Even Paul had a fear in him. As, as much as he was filled up with the Holy Spirit and and just full of, of Christ, there was still fear. So in that, when that comes, not that if it comes, but when it comes, we got Jesus. And 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 we have ways to battle that. And I, I love that about, about this part of chapter three in Thessalonians. Good stuff. All right. Well, I'll jump into the next part. Let's do it. Uh, so verse six. But now that Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news of your faith and love and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desiring to see us as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, in all our affliction and distress, we were comforted concerning you by your faith. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God for you, for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. It's good. Mm-hmm. You guys got something to say when we keep going? I think I, just the overarching theme of, of chapter three is simply just the encouragement to continue on. To, uh, even more as the day of crisis continues to come and and the closer it, it gets and so um yeah i think that's just really that's all he's really honing in on right here is you know obviously desperately wants to be uh be present with them but at the same time like more importantly wants to make sure that they're continuing to move forward yeah and i think i think an important uh life note here for me would be it, when we get in hard times, whatever that means, uh, whatever is coming our way and has got us kind of down and out, we always want to seclude ourselves. We always want to isolate ourselves. We always want to, no, I'm not, an- Nate's calling me. I'm not answering that phone. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I, I already know what he's going to say. And we just get, kind of get an attitude. And, and I would say, and I'm saying this more to me than anyone else, um, you got to let friends help you. You got to let those people who love you help you through the tough times when you're going through a tough time. So don't hide. Um, And again, I'll give you a hide one day. You can hide one day. (laughs) 
I'm cool with that. But um, but then you got to get back out there and let people encourage you, which is which is why Paul sent Timothy just in case they were doing bad, which they weren't. They were as strong as ever. He wanted them him. He sent him there to encourage them to get them up and going again and and to remember who they are in Christ. That's what friends are for to remind us who we are. Good stuff. And yeah, and then that last part where he says, we rejoice and with great joy. And it's just like, man, uh, I think for me, that that's a good reminder. I don't know if you guys suffer with this, but I can I can get down and out and I want, I want to rejoice about my own personal wins. And I don't know, I don't think I am very good about rejoicing with other people's wins sometimes. And so that's sure. why I'm like, that's just cool. So I think I think that's something that will help us all is if like we can rejoice with other people in their like, oh, man, your faith is growing. Like, let's rejoice in that. And and sometimes I, I think I've seen other people go like, oh, but mine's not or God's not answering my prayers. And I'm like, oh, oh, good. Wow, for they, you. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good. Well, All right. finish her out. Let's do it. Here you go. Now, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct your way, direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and with all his saints. That's beautiful. Good way. Man, good way to end right there. Oof. I think one of uh, Satan's greatest ploys is to um, get us to look good on the outside, but be very shallow, be uh, like what, what scriptures of whitewashed tombs on the inside. We're not, we, we just kind of go through the motions. Yeah, okay, I went to church, I left, I, I helped, I, I did this. And there's no, um, there's no um, love behind it. You're just doing it out of obligation or it's the right thing to do. And uh, I think Satan um, wants us to feel good about us on the outside. But what are we on the inside? Who are we? Who, yeah. re who really are we? And um, I just, I, I think we need to be real and not be fooled by that. Yeah. I think, I think, Rick, just what you're speaking about is, is probably, it would be a very good reason why accountability is so, so difficult. Yeah. Why we, why we really struggle with um, holding others accountable and accepting accountability on our own, on our own behalf. It's so hard because, well, it's a ploy to keep us from actually deepening our faith and really moving in the direction that God wants us to move in. And uh, so I think that that could be a very, I mean, that's the devil understands that that is a weakness in our lives. And uh, it also could be a great strength in the Lord if we were willing to allow that in or be a part of that for someone else. And so you know, even just what you said just brought that to my mind. Man, that really, that's really probably why it is so difficult um, for all of us to really walk through that. Yeah. And if we do that, what you just spoke about, mm -hmm. not only are we encouraged, but they're encouraged. Right. Yeah. And then they're going to tell someone which is going to encourage them. Let me tell you about Nate. Let me tell you about our conversation that we had. I, I, I mean, I, oftentimes I share with Pastor Byron, well, and you guys too, about this happened to me and that happened to me. And you guys are just smiles from ear to ear for me. You know, you're patting me on the back. That was awesome. And what a, what a great story. And uh, share your wins. We do that in staff. Share your wins. It's important to encourage, encourage people. We, we need encouraged in these times. We live in tough times. And encouragement is big. Yeah. We need that so much. Yeah. And, and just to end with what I'm saying there is the encouragement, the best encouragement that we have is Jesus is coming back. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> come on. 
So, here, I want to throw one more thing out there. You yeah. talked about shallow, and we actually, um, our student ministries team is reading a book called It's Personal, and it's all about, like, actually making ministry personal and, and you know, having a personal relationship, and that will actually help others go deeper. And, well, anyways, at the beginning, it talks about how, in general, naturally we go to shallow because shallow is easier. But mm-hmm. I just want to read this this part here because I feel like it it just it fits. So shallow in small amounts can provide relief, but shallow all the time can leave us empty. Shallow in some relationships just makes us polite, but shallow in every relationship can make us lonely. Mm-hmm. Wow. Shallow wow. shallow is the, the easy way to go, but man, if you stay there, you will. You'll be empty, you'll be lonely. But on top of that, you, yeah, you just, you won't ever grow deep and you won't have those deep, that deep love that Jesus wants us to have for each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just like, just like we're right, like what Rick was saying. I mean, if you're not in deep with people, you, you don't understand or you don't see the growth that necessarily takes place in their life as well, which can be, which, which really is an encouragement to you when you begin to see somebody, when you see a light bulb go off and you see, um, you just begin to, or you begin to see them go, their eyes just open up and seeing the world in the way that God wants you to see the world. Like that is, there's nothing, I, I mean, that's one of the most invigorating things that you can, uh, you can be a part of. I mean, that's what Paul's talking about. Like, that's the whole point of like, uh, that it would be, in, he doesn't want it to be in vain. That's why he wants to encourage because he doesn't want that to be in vain. He doesn't want that because he, you know, al- although he had a limited time with these folks, he went in deep. He shared in his life. He allowed his life to be seen, and and because of that, he doesn't he doesn't want that to go off or not. It's not a it's not because he doesn't he doesn't want to look at it as a waste of time. He doesn't want to see a waste of life for someone else. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that that depth is and what what is what I'm reminded about is a phrase that we've often used at Life Changing: a life that touches a life that touches a life that touches a life. Wow, that's the way it works. Mm-hmm. Get into other people's lives. Yeah. Whether they want you in there or not, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, well, I mean, you got to. <laughs> you got to break down the door every once in a while. Tear, <laughs> off, tear off a roof. Tear off a roof. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Well, cool. There it is. Another chapter down. Look at that. That's impressive. It's quite the role. There's going to be a lot of expectations going forward. I, I don't think I don't think it's ever been done. Three <laughs> chapters in three days. No way. Good stuff. Great. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start praying, and uh, Rick, you can you can finish her off. Sounds good. Okay. Make it happen. <clears throat> well, Father, thank you so much for this time, Lord. Thank you for these two guys. Thank you for Chris and Rick, and Lord, the opportunity for us to. Uh, to dig into the word, Lord, we thank you for those who are tuning in right now, Lord, who uh, who find themselves, whether they're alive and um, during the time of 714 or, Lord, they're finding themselves later on. Lord, we thank you uh, that we can join in together uh, through this technology to to dig in and, and just, Lord, for us to be encouraged, um, not just encouraged, but to be also be uh, convicted, Lord, in our own relationships and our own relationship with you and our relationships with others, Lord, that we would desire um, to to pour out our life into others, Lord, and we would, uh, and it would be so much so that we would hate to see it go in vain because we'd hate to see life uh, be wasted. So, Lord, thank you so much for what you are are doing right now, Lord. Every time we open up Scripture and we allow it to um, to enter into our lives, Lord, you do something remarkable through that. So, Lord, my prayer would be that we would uh, we would let this word take root in our lives, Lord, that we would. We would not try to oh, get it out of there, Lord, but or let it just kind of wash through the system. But, Lord, that we would allow it to just to enter in and just to root in deeply. Lord, thank you uh, for what you are stirring in each every one of us. Lord, I pray that we would uh, we today we would look for opportunity um, to share our lives with others Lord, that we would uh, we would. Um, act upon a name, maybe, Lord, that would that would enter into our hearts or into our minds, Lord, that we would uh, we would choose to reach out to that person, um, to give encouragement, to check in on them, 
um, Lord, just to, um, to be a bit of accountability in the midst of these times, Lord. So thank you for what you are already doing. Lord, I pray that we would, uh, we would uh, honor you today. We would honor your word today by uh, living it out. So, Lord, uh, we invite you into all that we do. We invite you into this conversation, Lord. We invite you into the moments when we leave this conversation and we go into our, our everyday lives, Lord. I pray that we would just uh, we would choose today to be obedient in you. So, Lord, thank you for what's going to take place in that. So, Lord, we honor you. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Yes. Father, we pray for America. And uh, we're not selfish. We pray for every nation of this world. And Father, I want to pray for the peoples of, of the nations of this world, and especially America. Uh, Lord God, that um, you would melt their hearts, that you would penetrate their hearts, each and every person, that they would say, there's just something that, that I'm missing. There's just something that I, that I need. And they would seek out the true God. They would seek out you. They would know your son, Jesus, and hear his story and hear the testimony of friends who have turned their feet towards you. And uh, uh, Father, I, I just pray for the people to understand even in a deeper thing, not as a whitewashed tomb, but in a, in a, a depth that is so strong that their faith is so strong that they're so um, uh, aware of who they are in Christ, Lord God, that nothing, especially the tempter, uh, can uh, throw them to the side or get them all messed up. Father, I just pray that uh, we continue strong uh, in our faith as we find you and find out who we are in Christ. And Lord, I pray for every leader of every nation uh, to know you, uh, to understand who they are in Christ, Lord, and to lead their nation um, as, you would, as you would have it, Lord, that your will would be done. Lord God, I pray Holy Spirit would just, um, again, melt their hearts and uh, that they would turn to you. So Father, our prayer is that we would turn from our wicked ways and turn back to you, and that we ask that you would heal our land, heal our nation, heal our world, Lord. That's what we ask. Lord, we need you so much, and we praise you and ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, well done, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Um, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you all out there for, for joining us this Monday morning, bright and early, and uh, yeah, it's Monday. And you know what you know what they say. This is the most important Monday there is yet. That's so make fine. it so. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys on blessed day. See ya.